How's it going guys? I wanted to make this video to show you how to extract the chibis and then the character arts from Girls Frontline as a sort of addendum to the last data mining video I did because I didn't go very much in depth at all about this part but I did mention that it's relatively the same so I figured it'd be worth to put another video out in case that's what you're interested in getting out. So really this starts much of the way the last one did. You just go to the, where, the, where the application is installed and Android New. And now at this point, instead of downloading the login asset, we are going to look for the character asset. So, for example, if we wanted to use like HK23, we can search for that. There we go. And then we need both the asset bundle and then the spine. That's what the SPI will be fully. Then we just once again extract to that to the desktop. And right now we're done with BlueStacks at this point. So now we have two files: uh, HK23. Asset bundle, HK23 spine asset bundle. Now we could do what we did last video and we could use the Uni asset bundle extractor to work with that. But I found that for extracting the chibis and especially extracting the spines, it is much better to use this program I found called Unity EX. So this we open up and it looks, it looks really different, but it's really much the same. Uh, you just hit open archive. Uh, we want to switch to all because it doesn't uh, natively look for AB files, and then we have both of these here. So if we're extracting just the character art, we'd want hk23.assetbundle. Open that. Now we look, this is relatively the same as what we saw in uh, Unity Asset Extractor. Uh, once again, we can sort by type, and then we can just look at which ones are the texture 2Ds. If we do right-click textures, set to PNG, and then we can ex export with convert. So this will export all of these files. One issue I run into with this program, however, we'll see here. This is being what we just extracted. It will get the PNGs for the alpha layers, but it will not get the PNGs for the uh, other texture files. It will put them in uh, .pvr files, and that can be a little bit of an issue. Uh, for that, we have another program here, PVR Texture Tools GUI. You can bring this up. And once again, I'll link all of these down in the description below. Uh, but this will be a program we can use to open the PVR files. So I, it'll look here. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to do the normal one, we just do HK23 texture PVR open. Uh, I can't tell you why they always come flipped. You just hit this tool here, flip along an axis, and then flip vertical. Now it's normal. And then you can right or click on file, and it's save image, uh, saves PNG. We can just call this normal. And then we want to do the same thing for the damage one. So then we go for HK23D for damage. Open that PVR. Once again, flip vertical. We can look. This is how it should be. Then file, save image, and call this one damage. Cool. So now at this point, we can close out of PVR texture tools. We don't need to end up saving these files because we are only interested in the PNGs and not the PVRs. Now you can just delete those PVR files and now we are good. We'll just take these out of the folder just to make it easier to look at. Now we have all of these. You might notice at this point that there are these white borders around. I cannot tell you why these are here. This is not something I'd seen previously, but it's just... I couldn't tell you. Uh, but we it doesn't really matter. We will be using the alpha layers anyway as a mask in order to get them transparent. Because you notice here, this is not a transparent image. It's a black background on white, and it has the weird, like, artifacting that sometimes certain arts will have. So now we got that all done, and we can open up Photoshop. And you got this little preview of the thumbnail. Uh, then if we go back to our desktop, say we want to do the normal one first. Then we drag in the normal file, and then what we need to do next is we need to drag in the corresponding alpha layer. So we're doing the normal one, so we just want the standard alpha layer. And what the alpha layer will do is going it's going to act as a mask. Uh, pretty much we only want the white, and then nothing else will show. Uh, one thing to note is this is half the, the alpha layer is half the size of the extracted texture. So then we can just go up here in Photoshop. Uh, it's locked width and height. We just set that to set to 150%, not 200. So now you look, it overlays perfectly. Then what we want to do next is drag this below, and then we right click on the art layer with the art and then we create a clipping mask. So now this is currently clipping to where this is and then you can just right click and merge visible. 
You can also use like actual layer masks to do that, but I just, I've always preferred clipping masks. So now if we see, we can draw behind it. Look at that. Nice and transparent with clean edges. And there. So at that point, we can just delete that layer, file save as. And we can export to a desktop as just um, uh, transparent normal. Save it wherever you want. And then if we go here, we have the transparent character art. And the process is much the same for the damaged art. If we want to do that real quickly, we just bring in uh, uh, damaged PNG. We'll just do it since on the same one, delete that layer, and then we add in the damaged transparent. Make that 150%. Move below, right click, create clipping mask, then right click, merge visible. File, save as, and then we can just do damage, transparent. Okay, and if we go back here, we now have the damage transparent file for this. So that's pretty much how you will do it for all of the characters. It's pretty much the same. If you want to look into, back into BlueStacks, if we wanted to look at, for example, uh, if we did AEK, because I know this is one that has costumes that I was testing with earlier. So if you notice, there's AEK999, there's AEK9991. The other numbers will indicate a, a costume. I don't know if there's a way to tell which costume is which. I'm, I'm assuming it is a release order of the costume. But, like for example, if we did G36, she'll probably have, um, have a couple of costume numbers. I can't tell you what that means, but yeah. So pretty much just uh, get all the ones with the same numbers and that'll be both the asset bundle and then the spine for it. Now up next we can look at how to extract the character sprites and then the spines and then be able to animate those as GIFs or export the frames, do, we, do whatever we want to do with those. So this is, we will, this is what we'll be using here, the character hk 23 spineab So we'll do much of what we did last time. Uh, open up Unity EX, open archive, and then select all again. And then this time we will be selecting Spine AB. So if you look at this, this has a couple of different files and it's a couple of different looking things here, but it's really much the same. I usually like to sort by size because the stuff we want will go to the bottom. So we will need three files from this. We will need hk23atlas.txt, hk23skeleton.txt, and then hk23text. Oh, sorry, that's... there we go. We'll do those, and again, textures, PNGs, uh, export with convert and we'll get this file here again and we will we can just drag that with the rest of them so now we have these three files and these are the only three files we will need to be able to open up the chibi and then be able to animate it and such so just always make sure whatever character it is you will need the atlas the skeleton and then the texture once we're done with that, we can just close out of here. And now we will be opening up a web program. Here's a website I'll list down below again. It's a off of GitHub, but this is a, I guess, website where you can upload Skeleton, Atlas, and Spine, and then make stuff out of it. So once we're here, this website makes it pretty simple to animate from the files we have. So if we just go here, hit, uh, hit open, and then desktop, and then we select the three files, Atlas, Skeleton, and the sprite sheet. So once we see here, it'll all work, and we'll know it works when uh, the character shows up here. So then there's like multiple things you can do here. You have a lot of controls for how you want to set up the GIF. But what I usually do is click down here in this drop-down menu, and this will show all the different animations that are programmed to it. So for example, if you want, uh, we'll just do a GIF of her just waiting. So you see a little animation here. You can add the motion to the list, so if you want it to wait and then move and then to reload uh, you can add whatever you want here the list of actions and then you can even include stuff as how to split them up the delay, delay for frame how many frames whatnot but once you're done with that you want to calculate and preview and then you want to generate frames this step here might take a second if it's a relatively long process you have but then once it's done they'll show up down here and as you can see we have a all the frames have been generated it's got the list of them all there. At this point, if you just wanted to extract the PNG of the chibi, what you could do is then select any of these you wanted, right click, open image, and new tab, 
and then save as, and this would give you a transparent version of the sprite. But if you wanted to keep an animation of it, then you just go back to this, and then we go up to here. What we're doing here is, this is the kind of the toolbox for creating the, the GIF itself, or the animation for what it's worth. One thing is, I would recommend switching to animated PNG, because you can have a transparent background on this. Um, and that's really the only setting I would recommend changing. On some of them, you might need to uh, detect bounds for GIF, but that's only for uh, animations that move a lot back and forth. I can kind of show that afterwards, but at this point, you just look, you make sure everything's in frame, see if there's any clipping, which, see there's a tiny bit there, I think. Uh, that might just be her gun. Yeah, no, we're okay, no clipping here. So we just detect bounds if we need to, and then generate. And this will work a second, but then this will be able to show us the animation that we have queued up here. So you see she waits, then she runs, and she reloads. And then she should loop. And you can do different things here, as how many times to loop, the frame delay, whatnot. There's also extra settings you can, you'll be able to tell on uh, this list, if we just show her waiting. This can remove the shadow, can remove glasses if there are any, if you're into it you can change the eye colors. I don't usually mess with many of this stuff, but besides maybe remove shadow if I need to. But if you do any settings here, you're going to have to redetect bounds, regenerate frames, and such. Uh, I'll show you what it, what detecting bounds is useful for. So, we see this, uh, I believe the blue box is, or the red box is the, the hard edge of the GIF. So if we were to generate one of just her moving, you know she's moving outside of the, the red box. Sorry. Add, capital preview, generate frames. So now if we were to look at this, this GIF of her now, you can see she'll clip out of there. And that's not what we want. So this is where we would detect bounds for GIF. And then if you look back to here, you can see it's kind of readjusted this red and blue cropping box to show the actual uh, bounds of the GIF now. So again, you know, loop it infinitely, generate. So you now see this will create a GIF in which... Oh, she does clip. Why, though? Okay, that time it worked. Uh, probably going to cut it out, but for whatever reason it didn't crop right the first time. What's up, guys? It's editing Colin here, and if you were looking really closely, you might have noticed that it didn't crop properly the first time because I did not regenerate the frames. So, word to the wise, if you're trying to do stuff like that, after you detect the bounds for the GIF, regenerate frames. And then you can generate the GIF again, and it should all work. Now you can see, when you generate the bounds correctly, it'll adjust it so the character will not be flying off the screen. And at this point you can just save, either as the animated PNG or as a GIF. You know, save. And yep. Yeah. So now we have her little victory thing, and then we can open this, and then she does her victory tumble. And that's, that's pretty much it for the characters, character art in the sprite sheets. It's a little bit more involved in extracting the story art, but it's still relatively simple once you get the idea down. Uh, another thing, there are two other things to mention, I think. Uh, scroll down, you can unpack Atlas Texture, and this kind of splits everything off. I don't know how useful this is for many people, but if for whatever reason you need to do that, you can. So here is, like, you can each individual uh, part of the sprite sheet can be extracted, if that's what you're into. Um, and this is something else I want to mention. It's a uh, GitHub resource database, which has a lot of extracted character arts and such. The, the one reason why I'm making this and not just linking you all to this is that this hasn't been updated since like June of 2019. So it's relative, not super out of date, but it's enough out of date that if you're on like the Chinese servers and looking for some of the new dolls, you won't be able to find them and you'll have to extract them all yourself. So if you look through here, this has a lot of cleaned up PNGs of a lot of the fairies, has all the characters, the different, what's it called? The different arts and whatnot. It also has all the spines. So this, this is much easier if you're just trying to get something of one of the dolls that's on that, it's definitely on the English server, but most of the ones on the Chinese server. And if you, if you just want the character arts, you just go into pick, and then this also has some of the... Uh, what's it called? The ones that are in the... 
I guess in the story, I don't know what to call it. So like you have the different expressions. So maybe that's her surprise. This is her angry. It has those arts that are a little bit harder to extract because I don't know where they're located at, but that, that should be about it for all the stuff. I think I kind of rambled on a little bit there at the end with all the uh, kind of extras add-ons. So hopefully this was helpful to y'all as well. Um, my next video, I'll probably try to look into getting one out for a tutorial on how to extract the music files in the game because that's just another slightly different way of data mining. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Again, let me know if there are any questions that you have that I skipped or if I could elaborate on as well if there's anything else you want me to go in detail on for another video I'll be able to look into that and then help you out thanks for watching